Now, Yaqub, he's a Nabi. And because he was a Nabi, every child that was born for Yaqub, he used to hope that this boy would be a prophet that would inherit what Allah has blessed with Yaqub. So the firstborn, he is not a Nabi according to understanding of Yaqub because he did not see the, the, the sign of a Nubuwa in this kid. But when Yusuf was born, it was a different story. When Yusuf was born, he had two things. One, he was cuter than all other kids. He was more beautiful than other kids. And he had the symptoms or the, the, the characteristic of a Nabi. So Yaqub, he loved him so much. And he kept him so close. But here is a lesson that we should learn. Yaqub showed his children that Yusuf is his favorite. He loved Yusuf more than anyone else. And this is sometimes a mistake that we make as parents. We show this child, and by the way, all of us, all parents, we have one child that you favor. Am I right? You have one child, you have nine kids. You have one child that you favor whether it's a boy or a girl. But you don't tell the rest of the kids, oh, you know, you, you are so cute. I love you more than the rest. You guys are hashish. Get away out of this, you know. You're useless. You don't tell them that. You keep that love to yourself. Yaqub, that overtook him. The love that he had for Yusuf overtook him, and he was not able to hide. So as a little child, Yaqub, Yusuf comes to him and says, Dad, Last night I had a dream. And the dream was I had I saw ten stars and the sun and the moon and they made sujood to me. Here Yaqub understood something that is so profound, and that is this little boy is not a normal kid. He is one who is going to be a unique child. So he gave him a nasiha. Qala ya bunay la Whatever you heard, whatever you saw last night. Do not share with your siblings. And what did Yusuf do, alayhi salam? According to some of the Mu'arrikhin, he did exactly what his father asked him not to do. So he went to his brother and said, listen, last night in my dream, I saw 11 stars, the sun and the moon, and they made sujood to me. The boys got together, and they said, we should get rid of this kid. Because Yusuf and his brother, they more beloved to our father than us. And we are a group. We can help this man, his, our father, but he loves them more. We will show him. See, the first lesson as a parent is never ever show that you love or you favor one child over the others. Even if the others do not respond, they will also have, they will still have something in their heart. Our father loves so and so. Now, how do you, how, how, how would you know if your children know that you favor one over the other? This is a sign. If they get together and they say, okay, you go talk to dad, you go talk to mom, then they know that you love this one more than you love them, and that is a very dangerous thing. That's number one. Number two, Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam, when the brothers came to him, قالوا, ya, ya abana, ma laka la ta'manna ala Yusuf. He said, why don't you trust us with Yusuf? Because they already had an idea and plan that, hey, when we take Yusuf out, we're going to kill him or we're going to throw him into a well. So they say to the father, why don't you trust us with Yusuf? And what did the father say? He said, I don't trust you because I'm afraid that you will start playing and a wolf may come and devour my son. Here, the father made another thing that was very serious, which was he gave his children an idea that they never had. Because the idea that they had first was throw him into the well, walk away, say something else, but they didn't know what to tell their father. But Yaqub said, I'm afraid that when you will, if you take my son, you will be playing around and a wolf will come and he will eat my child. 
And that's exactly what they claim later on. Now, from the parents' point of view, make sure you don't give your children ideas. Don't give them ideas. Sometimes you think you are warning your child and you don't want him to say, listen, don't listen to music when I leave. Mm, what did you give that child? The idea of listening to music. So he said, now when he leaves or when she leaves, you know, I'm going to listen to music. Your son says to you, Dad, can I, can I text, you know, my brother or my sister or can I call mom? And I say, yes, you can have it, but don't play any games. What did you do? You just gave him an idea right now. So he would text his sister. He would text or he call his mother. And then while you're not looking, he will go to the games and he will play games. See, this is from the tarbiyah. You don't do this to your children. You don't tell them, don't do this. Because as soon as you say, don't do or do not do this, all they hear is do this. The don't part, do not register with the children. So Ya'qub alayhi salatu was salam, he missed that point. Say, listen, you know, don't give your children an idea. And that's why when they came back, when they throw Yusuf into the well, they came back and they said, Ya Abana, inna dhahabna, we went to raise one another. And wa tarakna Yusuf inda mata'ina. And we left Yusuf with our belongings. And then a wolf came and devoured our brother. And then they said, Wama anta bimu'minin lana wa law kunna sadiqin. Now here, look what they did. They said, we know you're not going to believe it, even if we're telling the truth. See, the children were very clever also. Your children will play psychology games, psychological games with you. And then they will do something bad, and they will say to you, you're not going to believe me anyway. Why do, why do you have to tell you the truth? And then they say, okay, tell me, son, tell me, what did you, you know. They already know. So you learn also from this. Children, no matter what age that they are very clever, very smart. And a lot of parents do not give their children credit for how intelligent and how smart they are. Your child, in the child's studies, they said, this is how ch smart children are. They said grade five, grade three, grade three to grade seven, they did these studies and they said, if they have new teacher, you know, substitute teacher, children, it will take them only 15 minutes to assess the teacher. If he's a good teacher or a bad teacher, if they can get away with things and if they cannot get away with things. For the first 15 minutes, they will size up the teacher and they will play that teacher without the teacher knowing. Children are extremely smart, very smart, but we don't give them credit. So your child, when you're dealing with your child, should understand that, yes, you acknowledge his intelligence, you acknowledge his ability of analyzing things, but he's not as smart than you. That is very important thing. Lesson, other lesson that we learn from the story of Yusuf, that Yes, love between father or parents and a child is a natural love. But it should not ever overtake you like it did with Ya'qub alayhi salatu, alayhi salatu was salam. What happened to Ya'qub? Ya'qub, the ulama said he was away from Yusuf for 40 years. Ya'qub, for 40 years he was crying. He was crying until he lost his sight. He would not stop crying for his child. Now, the other children felt, you know, he loves Yusuf whether he's here or not. And that is a feeling that you don't want your child to experience. I would stop here, inshallah, allow the other speakers to address the subject. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Please pay attention to the, our guests and speakers because really what they're saying is something that they worked hard and is all related to the relationship between the child and the parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. الكار الأذان يقول مثل ما يقول المؤذن إلا في حي على الصلاة وحي على الفلاح فيقول لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله ويقول وأنا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله رضيت بالله ربا وبمحمد الرسول وبالإسلام دينا يقول ذلك عقب تشهد المؤذن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ظهر أذا نيروبي سيتي تايم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته إنك لا تخلف الميعاد. O oh Allah, Lord of this perfect call and established prayer, grant Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, the intercession and favor. 
and raise him to the honored station you have promised him. Verily, you do not fail in your promises. Horizon TV, Kurunzi ya Taifa. On the next episode, Hakuna wadui ispokuwa mavali. Vali mni nani? Ni yule ambaye fanya jambo ambalo sila haki. Ame kupiga tu bure, achukia tu dini yako hata kikukupa nafasi. Vewe hukuanza kitu cha kumpinga mambo yake. Umemwachie na huru wake na mambo yake huku muingilia. Kwa hivu fala uduan, hakuna wadui wakweza kupigana ila ala valimin ila kwa vale ambao ni mavali. Hii ni kama ile aya ambaye mwenyezi mkwa asema وَإِنْ عَاقَبْتُمْ فَعَاقِبُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا عُوْكِبْتُمْ بِهِ وَإِنْ عَاقَبْتُمْ Buki wate sawatu Basi wate seni فَعَاقِبُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا عُوْكِبْتُمْ بِهِ Kama mulivote swanyini Buki lipa mateso Jambu mime fanyiwa Fanyini kwa kiasi kile kile musizidi Qur'ani kita mchangu Qur'ani mungozo wangu Qur'ani mubezi wangu Qur'ani pumba onangu Qur'ani kita mchangu Qur'ani mungozo wangu Qur'ani mubezi wangu Horizon TV, Kurunzi ya Taifa. قبلهم من قرية أهلكناها أفهم يؤمنون وما أرسلنا قبلك إلا رجالا نوحي إليهم فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن not a single city which we destroyed believed before them, so will they believe? And we sent not before you, O Muhammad, except men to whom we revealed the message. So ask the people of the message if you do not know. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhin astafa amma baad. Respected viewers, a question has been posed that can a person be a Muslim and a Christian at the same time. It's important for us to clarify that each and every religion has fundamental tenets and principles. For example, the fundamental tenet of Christianity is believing in Jesus, whom Muslims refer to as Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, as a son of the Almighty and part of divinity and part of the Trinity. Now that is a fundamental principle and tenet of the Christian faith. Islam opposes that principle in the sense that Islam believes that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique, he is matchless, and he does not begot, and he does not, he does not beget, nor is he begotten. Allah in the Holy Quran says in Surah Ikhlas, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuan ahad. He does not beget, or nor is he begotten. He does not give birth to, or nor is he given birth to. Allah in the Holy Quran in Surah Ma'idah in particular has refuted the divinity of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam in several places. لَكَدْ كَفْرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَالْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ They have committed disbelief who say that Isa, uh, Jesus, is one of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is divine. Or لَكَدْ كَفْرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَ ثَلَاثَ They have committed disbelief who believe that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Jesus is part of the Trinity. And Allah then goes on to refute their divinity with this beautiful passage, مَا الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ إِلَّا رَسُولُ قَدَ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُولُ Masih ibn Maryam is a Rasul and a Prophet of the Almighty. And there are many Prophets that came before him. And his mother was Siddiqah, a very truthful and honest and upright woman. 
Kana ya akulani ta'am. Both of them used to eat food. Now how is it possible for someone who is in need of food for existence, how can they be divine? So it's, there are two fundamentally opposing principles. So it's impossible for a person to have a situation where he believes in both of these opposing principles. So in conclusion, no, a person cannot be a Muslim and Christian at the same time. However, the interaction between them, how they are supposed to interact, that's a different matter completely whatsoever from this particular question. The question itself, no, because of the fundamentally opposing principles, uh, it cannot be gathered in one person and in one ideology and in one belief. My husband does not perform salat and prayer. And how is he different from a non-Muslim? Firstly, let me say that a person who does not perform his prayer, it is very, very unfortunate. Because after Iman, after the fundamental beliefs in Islam, the oneness of the Almighty and the prophethood of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Salat and prayer is the most important injunction in our deen, in our religion. Awalu ma yuhasibu bihil abdu yawm al qiyamati as salah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the first thing that would be a person would be taken account of with regard to his deeds would be with regard to salah. In one hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the apparent distinction between a believer and a disbeliever is in the performance of salah. And therefore, it would be very, very unfortunate if a person does not perform his salat because he is forsaking the most important practical injunction of the religion. Having said that, a person who does not perform his salah, as long as he believes that salah is important and compulsory, it does not take him out of the fold of Islam. He remains a Muslim, even if he's a transgressor, which he needs to change his condition and he needs to repent from to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regard to not performing his prayer. However, he is still a Muslim and as such, the marriage does not break and perhaps what the need is to motivate and encourage him to start performing his salah. So I think in conclusion, uh, it is very unfortunate because he is forsaking the most important injunction of the religion. However, it does not take him out of the fold of Islam and the marriage remains intact. And perhaps we should all make dua for people who do not perform their prayers. To what extent is a person liable to support his extended family? Now, let us keep in mind there are a few things. The first thing is uh, when a person is married and he's a father, then it is his responsibility to look after his wife and to look after his children. الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم. Allah Taala says that the man is the head of the household, and one of the reasons why he is the head of the household is he takes care of the expenses of his family. Nabi Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "أفضل دينار ينفقه الرجل." The best dinar a person spends is that in which he looks after the financial needs, not necessarily the extravagance, but financial necessities of his family. That would mean his um, wife and his children and his aging parents because that would be his uh, responsibility. As far as the extended family is concerned, if he has the means, then Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, if he has the means, then it is preferable for him to help his extended family first before helping other people who are needy. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa had said, to help a person who is poor is one reward. But to help a relative who is poor and is in need, you have a double reward because you are helping someone who is needy and you're also helping him who is a relative. So let us look at these questions and look at the, the answer. Firstly, yes, it is compulsory for him to look after the financial needs of those who are dependent upon him, his wife and children and aging parents. And for example, the other aspect with regard to the extended family, if he has the means, and that's a very important caveat, if he has the means, then it is preferable for him to first look at the needs of the relative rather than looking at the needy outside the family. Jazakumullah.
watching Horizon Television, the beacon for the nation. Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Respected viewers, welcome back again to the program. And a question has been posed, is it permissible to keep a fish in an aquarium as a pet? Now, basically, in the aspect of keeping pets, there are a few important aspects. Fundamentally, it is not prohibited. And this comes from an incident in the Sirah. When Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to go and visit a young sahabi, a young companion, and he had a pet, and he had a parrot, or he had a bird, and that bird had passed on, and he was very, you know, sad with regard to the passing of that pet of his. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Aba Umar, ma fa'al al Oh, Aba Umar, what happened to your pet bird that was known as Nughair? So it shows that to keep a pet is fundamentally and permissible. However, what is very important is, if you are going to keep a pet, then you have to see to its needs. It's not permissible for you to keep it and then neglect its needs. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made mention that amongst the people who will be taken to task by Almighty Allah on the day of judgment would be the one who keeps a pet, does, doesn't allow it to roam freely, to fend for its needs, and doesn't even itself look after its needs. So in that particular way, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has struck the right balance. If you are going to keep it, then see to it that you keep it in a proper way and you do not let it wither away or be destroyed by your neglect. Is it permissible for me to seek divorce from my current husband due to his physical shortcomings? Let us understand this in a proper perspective. We all know that divorce is something that Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said, Abghadul Halal. It is the most detested of all things that are permitted. Now, what, what we learn from here is that it is not something that it is encouraged. As far as possible, we should stay away from divorce and always try and keep a marriage and a family intact. So that's the first thing. Because keeping the family intact has tremendous amount of repercussions upon society, upon family, etc. So the first thing is, do not seek divorce unnecessarily. The second thing which is important is that although it is something that is disliked, it is not haram, it is not prohibited. So if, for example, people are not getting along together and they are living a miserable life, Islam believes it is better sometimes to separate than to remain in a marriage in which there is no peace and the objectives of marriage are not being fulfilled. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, Either stay together correctly and properly, and if you can't do so, you can't get along, you are not compatible, then separate amicably. 
And then, of course, there's another aspect is that if, for example, there are certain shortcomings of the husband that uh, the wife cannot live with, for example, being physical shortcomings, impotence, for example, then these are uh, situations and these are reasons where she can petition an Islamic authority for the marriage to be annulled. So basically, there are three parts to this, uh, the answer to this question. Firstly, Islam does not encourage unnecessary seeking a divorce for trivial reasons, as far as possible, to keep the marriage and the family intact. Secondly is, it is permitted. It is not something that is encouraged, but it is permitted, especially when people are not getting along and in their marriage, they are living a life in which um, they are not uh, fulfilling the objectives of marriage, they can. And if, for example, there are certain type of difficulties that the husband is experiencing which the wife cannot live with, she can seek and petition an Islamic authority to annul the marriage. Jazakumullah. <laughs> Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Assalamu alaikum. This is Muhammad from Muslim Mastery, and today I'm going to be sharing with you seven tips to benefit from good company. Tip one be aware of the huge influence of friends. The Prophet compared a good friend to a perfume seller whom you will either smell or get fragrance from, and compared a bad friend to a blacksmith with whom you'll either singe your clothes or breathe in the fumes. Tip two, assess your current companions. Who influences you the most in your life? Are they helping you to get closer or further away from Allah? Limit the time you spend with people whose deen isn't as strong, but do your best to still be a good influence on them. Tip three, attend religious gatherings. Go to the masjid, Islamic events and religious circles. Not only will you find yourself surrounded by good company, but you'll also benefit from the Islamic reminders at these places. Tip 4. Make dua to Allah. Ask Allah to bless you with righteous companions who will remind you of Him. Also, ask Allah to make you and your friends love each other for His sake. Tip 5. Be careful whom you seek advice from. Whenever you're in difficulty, it's natural to turn to others for advice. However, take care to ask those whom you trust will give you a positive and sound piece of advice, as opposed to those who encourage negativity and backbiting. Tip 6. Find a mentor. Find someone whose deen and character you admire and ask them if they'd be willing to mentor you. Set up a regular call or meeting with them so that you can benefit from their coaching and encouragement. Tip 7. Spend time with people of high standards. Find people who have higher standards than you. You will automatically start to copy the people you spend the most time with. So stick to companions who will help you grow. May Allah give me 
and you the tawfiq to implement these tips. Jazakallah khair for watching. Please click subscribe if you want more videos specially designed to empower you. Assalamu alaikum. Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا قال تعالى في محكم تنزيله بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا صالحات إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا معاشر الإخوة الأحباء أوصيكم كما أوصي نفسي بتقوى الله فإن خير زاد التقوى خطبتنا اليوم يا إخوة الكرام حول حديث النبي الشريف رواه ابن حبان وقد رواه الترمذي أيضا وصححه الألباني وقال حديث حسن صحيح بعد يكون حميد من زيمون سبحانه وتعالى نكون تكيا رحمة نعماني كي فنزي شاكم تمي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نوصيني نيني كما نبو يسيا نفسي أنغو دو جزامو إسلامو تمشيني من زيمون سبحانه وتعالى kwani ufanisi wa hapa duniani na kesho akhera unalingana na kiasi ambacho kwamba sisi tuamcha Mwenyezi Mungu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala Maudhu yetu ya leo ikhwatul kiram ni kusharihisha na kupata faida na hadithi ya Mtume sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ambao ameipokea Ibn Hibban na akaipokea At-Tirmidhi aidan na akaisahihisha العلامة الألباني أكسيم حديث ينيه من حديث حسن صحيح. كتيكا بعض الطرق زاكية متوكية ضعف، لكن كتيكا طريق هي أم بقوم بتوتيسوما هافا أم بقوم بنيل أم بقوم بأميفنيا بحث شيخ الباني رحمه الله إن كواه حديث ني صحيح. لما دامو يمكوني صحيح بس لزل زنجين زوتي بيا زكية جو. Kwa vile maana ni maana ni moja basi zina kwako zote zinaweza kutumika katika kuwapa maelezo na kuwapa ilmu ndugu wa Islam. Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam atwambia la tazula qadama la tazulu qadama abdin yawm alqiyama hatta yusal an arba'a. Hato nyanyua gu mja yoyote wa Mwenyezi Mungu subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm alqiyama mpaka aulizo maswali manne. عن عمره فيما أفنى وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفق وعن علمه ماذا عمل به وعن جسده فيما أبلى Maswali ambo kwamba ya taulizwa kila mwanadamu ambo ya kwamba si mtume. Maswali haya manne ya taulizwa kila mwanadamu ambo ya kwamba si mtume. Kwa hu mimi na wewe ya akhil kerim tutaulizwa. An umrihi fima afna. 
Umri wetu sisi ambao kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu ametupa leo tangu balehe wewe mpaka pale ambapo kwamba malaika al-mut atakuja kuichukua roho yako fima afna umetumia umri ule katika nini umri ule umetumia kumcha Mwenyezi Mungu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala umetumia umri ule kufanya mambo ambayo kwamba ni mema hapa duniani Umri huu umeutumia kumuasi Mwenyezi Mungu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Umri huu umeutumia kudhulumu waja wa Mwenyezi Mungu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Fima afna umeupoteza umri ule ukifanya nini? Ya akhi al-Karim sisi tunainuka kila asubuhi. Unasema alhamdulillahi alladhi ahyana baada ma amatana wa ilayhi nushur. Al-istiqaz ni'ma والحياة نعمة تسأل عنها تتوليزو قوسو نعمة هي قواسيسي تكو هاي ليو سازا بالي أما بوكامبا سيسي هو تنكيتي تكاسيما ميمي ناريلاكسي ميم بويكا وكابوتيزا وكاتي وكاوا ويه سيكوي مبيتا هاوهزي كويسابو سيكوي لي ني منفاقاني وميابات أما بوكامبا تكوفا كشو أخيرا ikhotul kiram tunaishi zama ambazo kwamba unaweza inuka wewe asubuhi mpaka ukafika wakati wa kulala kama umeneemeka basi uliswali yani kama ni mambo ambayo kwamba leo unalau wafa uenda kuulizwa kuhusu siku ile labda utakuwa kwa sisi tuna swala tu lakini kumetoke kumekuja akhlaki na tabia siyo tumezitoa wapi ama labda tumezitoa uzunguni wa watu kuwa Watu hawana ahamia na wakati. Mtu hangali madha stafatu fi yaumi. Mtu hangali mimi leo nimefaidika vipi na hii siku yangu? Mtu anaweza lala kutwa na labda amefunga somo Ramadan. Mtu anaweza lala kutwa kwa sababu alikesha jana usiku akifanya yapi? Ibada, qiyam al-layl, qira'at al-Qur'an la ma la faida fihi fi dunya huwa la akhirah. Amepot amefyuk alikoko katika shughuli ambazo kwamba hazifai hapa duniani wala kesho akhera. Angalau labda angekesha kazini ambao kwamba itampa mshahara mwisho wa mwezi, ama alikesha kifanya biashara ambao kwamba itampa pato anufaike. La katika mambo ambayo kwamba la yanfa'na fi dunia wala al-akhira. Ya ikhwata al-kiram haya maisha ambayo kwamba tunaishi sisi kila siku kila mwaka ukifika ama kila siku ikifika siku yako ya birthday ikifika watoto wako labda wanakukatia keki ama labda wewe mwenyewe umchukua mke wako ukampeleka nje mkienda kula ama ni watoto wadogo wale tunawafanyia ma birthday muhasab ala hadhihi sanawat alladhi qadaitaha ala dunya sisi tutahesabiwa kwa hii miaka ambayo kwamba tumeketi katika dunia muhasab alaiha kwa hiyo tusiwe ni watu ambao kwamba tutaishi kama ambaye hakuna hesabu ambayo kwamba tutafanyiwa an umri fima abla fima afna umri umotumia katika nini ya ikhwa madamu hesabu kama hizi zinaingia khilini ndio pale ambapo kwamba inabidi wewe kama mu'min ukitoka asubuhi bismillah tawakkaltu ala allah wala haula wala quwata illa billah ukitoka kwenye nyumba yako unatiania mimi nenda kazini na kazi hii naenda kuifanya ni ibada kwa sababu nenda kutafuta riziki ya halali nilinyilishe mimi na familia yangu inakuwa wewe hali ukiwa uko kazini fa anta musaba ale wewe unapata thawabu ndani yake maajur ale wewe unapata uh, 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 ajr kutoka kwa Mwenyezi Mungu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala kwa kazi unayofanya bora iwe ni kazi halali na lolote utakalolifanya jiulize mimi nina keti na simu na chat na naeleza dini ya Mwenyezi Mungu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala ni munkar na zuia ama ni usabasi tu na mambo ya kipumbavu ni ilmu nazidisha katika katika akili yangu ama ni vipi iko tunaishi katika zama za watu wanapoteza wakati la utajua thamani ya wakati ya iko talkiram subhana rabbil izati tungenunua na thamani ya pesa nyingi kwa sababu alwaktu idha madha fat mat wakati ukishapita ndo maasalama umekuwa ime, ime haina kurudi tena wanasema mambo manne yakishatokea hayawezi kurudi tena moja 
wakati ukishapita huwezi kurudi tena an umrihi fi ma asla wa an ilmihi madha amila bi ilmu ambayo kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu amekupatia umefanya nayo nini wewe umeitumia vipi ilmu ile na ilmu kisman kuna ilmu ya fardhu kifaya na ilmu ya fardhu alain ilmu ya fardhu alain ni ile ambayo kwamba ni ilmu ya dini umeitumia vipi ni basic islamic education ilmu ya dini mimi kujua kuswali mimi kujua kufunga tohara akhlaki na hizi hizi ni ilmu dharuri kesho huwezi kwenda kusimama mbele ya Mwenyezi Mungu sallallahu alaihi wasallam ukajidai kwa wewe ulikuwa kwa hujui kujitahirisha vizuri wewe ulikuwa kwa hujui kusoma Qur'an hakuna hoja ambayo kwamba inaweza kusaidia mbele ya Mola wako kwa sababu katika zama tunazoishi ambaye ni mjinga hajui ni kwa kutaka Maimamu hawana kazi wanaketi kwenye mimbar watu hawaji kuuliza maswali kisha sisi tutadai ujinga vipi Imamu msikiti afakuwa ni mtu ambaye kwamba yoshughulishwa na Waislamu kwa sababu Waislamu hawajui Waislamu hawana ilmu kwa nini hawaitafuti Wameisoma Umar radhiallahu anhu Abu Bakar radhiallahu anhu Uthman bin Affan radhiallahu anhu na sahaba alkiram wengi radhiallahu anhum arda wameslimu katika umri mutakaddim Uislamu Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam kitumilizwa kwa mtume na miaka 40 Abu Bakar ana miaka 38 Umar akislimu na miaka 26 Kwa hivyo umri hatuwezi kudai ati sisi leo sisi leo tuna neema tumezaliwa waislamu Kwa hivyo hii ilmu uliokuwa nao umefanya nayo nini umemfundisha mwanao ama sisi kila kitu tuachia watu wafanye paka ile ilmu chache kumfundisha mwanao paka akhlaki ya kula pia yafundishwa shule ama madrasa basi wewe ni baba faida gani wewe ni babu faida gani wewe ni mzazi kwa faida gani ikhwat alkiram sisi mas'ulun tutakwenda kuulizwa sisi hata ile ilmu anayosoma mtoto wako shule ni lazima wewe uifuatilie uweze kukosoa palipokoseka uweze kure, kurekebisha pale ambapo kwamba kuna matatizo na uweze kumfafanulia mwanao pale hajaelewa na uweze kusahihisha pale ambapo kwamba watoto wetu wanapatiwa itikadi ambazo kwamba si za Kiislamu kasomeni angalia ni english books watoto wetu za literature wanazozisoma katika mashule wewe kama mzazi wewe wanunua tu wewe alipa fee wewe wajua mtoto wako somesho nini Hivi vitabu vya Kiswahili vya, vya fasihi angalieni watoto wanasoma nini ili uweze kusahihisha maadili na akhlaki ya watoto usio wenu wa kuangalia report form tu lakini ujui mtoto anasoma nini pitia vile vitabu na mwanao mwambie mwanangu haya yaache hapa hapa kwenye KCSE peke yake na mtihani akhlaki hizi usiji ukatubebea kuna kitabu mimi nakumbuka kilikuwa kinaitwa hafade Hafadhi ina kisa ndani cha mtoto wake kaitwa Fatima. Babake alikuwa kwa ni Sheikh Sudan. Kichikisa mikaandika mwenyewe Fatima na amepaa zawadi kwa kwa kwa, kwa kuandika kisa kama kile. Fatima huyu ni Muislamu lakini amesoma Amerika alivorudi kwao Sudan. Anaona dhiki. Dhiki yenyewe ni kwa nini huku lazima avae jilbaba saa zote avae na buibui avae na jifinike kule Amerika alikuwa kwa mwenye kivaa surwali zake na kadhalika huku lazima kuswali saa zote hakuna tena kutangamana baina yake na wanaume lazima watu wakae wanaume pekee wanawake pekee kule Amerika mezoe kwenda disco huku hakuna mwisho huyu mtoto wake kwenye hichi kitabu amejitoa roho yake wasema nimejiua kuweka huru wanawake wengine wa Kiislamu Yaani yeye ajitoa roho yake in protest. Sasa haya ndo maadili ya Kiislamu. Vitabu hivi vinasomeshwa kwenye mashule yetu. Na vinashomsomil asaf na somesho na walimu wetu, walimu wetu ambao si waislamu. Kwa hivyo mwalimu anakuwa ana celebrate katika kuponda Uislamu. Angalia Uislamu unampelekea umemnyanyasa na kumdhulumu na kumkandamiza mtoto wa kike mpaka amejitoa roho. Subhana rabbil izza. Ajitoa roho kwa nini? Amezuiwa kuwa na boyfriend, hafai kwenda disco fai kutangamana na nome hafai kufa, ha, hata a, a, lazima va hijab mambo ambayo kwamba ni asasi ya dini yetu 
Sasa wewe baba mafhum hii utaifa uta, utaisahihisha vipi kwa mtoto wako hakika anaosoma vitabu hivi shule. Tena wenyewe waerevu vitabu hivi ni vya form 1 na form 2 peke yake. Havifundishwi form 4. Kiswahili kuna kitabu kisicho kilikuwa kikitwa kitumbua cha mchele sio kimeingia mchanga. Mtoto wa kike ule ule mwenye kukiandika kile kitabu yosifu vile ambavyo kwamba mwanamume amemkamata ame kamata mtoto wa kike paka shahwa zikawapana. Vile vitabu hivi vafundishwa shule. Na saa zingine yatokea watoto wa kike wakafundishwa na wanaume. Mazio na hisia ni namna gani? Sasa we hutaki kufuatilia mtoto soma nini? Mambo ni haya. Tutakwenda kuulizwa mtoto wa kwetu atatushika ukosi ya ikhwata alkiram yawm alqiyam. Kwa sababu katika kupotea walikopotea watakwenda kulomu baba zao hawakuwalekeza. Wewe utasema mimi nilipeleka shule. Kupeleka shule haifai peke yake. Fuatilia hiyo soma nini? Fuatilia amesoma vipi? Fuatilia progress ya mtoto wako. Na ilmu chache uliokuwa nayo kama unayo mpe mwanao ya akhlaq kuna ilmu ambayo kwamba ni ya fitra tumezaliwa nazo tumezichukua kutoka bandi mali mwetu uh, akhlaki nzuri tabia nzuri namna ya kuzungumza namna ya kula namna ya kuketi na watu namna ya kuishi na majirani hizi ni ilmu ambazo kwamba watu hawafai kuzitoa nje watoto wanafaa kuzisoma ndani ya majumba yao kwa hivyo utakwenda kuulizwa katika ilmu uliyojua ya dini ambayo kwamba ni ilmu dharuri na utakwenda kuulizwa katika ilmu ambayo kwamba ni fardh al Hayo tem majukumu ambayo tunao mbele ya Mwenyezi Mungu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala na sisi leo tunamudwa na, na wakati